And you know, a lot of people ask me why I got started and where did this whole concept come from with a low carb cocktail guy. So I'll tell you a little bit about how I got started, why I got started and why I continue still doing what I do. So this all started back in 2015 when my wife decided that she was gonna get on a low carb diet. She lost a ton of weight. I jumped on it and um, I off and on, off and on. Overall, I lost a lot of weight, picked it back up. I'm just bouncing all over the place. I do low carb when she's watching. Eh, let's be honest with it. All my recipes are low carb for her and her friends that are still doing low carb. Uh, my daughter also who's um, insulin resistant. So tell you a little bit about um, how we got started. Like I mentioned, uh, 2015, my wife started a low carb diet and she loves margaritas. So we're trying to figure out how to get a good margarita, but still keeping it low carb by cutting the triple sec out of it or the orange liqueur. We found a couple of bottle mixes. Uh, Jose Cuervo at the time was doing um, a zero calorie one, which was really light. They don't make that anymore. Now it's just a light one. It was okay. It really wasn't bad because they got some pretty bad ones out there. I've been through... Uh, 90% of the margarita mixes that are supposed to be skinny and low carb and low calorie. I've been through almost all of them. There's two or three that are worth getting, but really it wasn't like the margarita that she got at her favorite restaurant. So played around with a few things, came up with a recipe that I liked that she liked and bam, there's our first low carb cocktail. So her, she was telling her friends about it who live out of state and they all want to know how I did it. So I said, I'll make a video. So what I did is I made my first video and it ended up on Facebook actually kind of going around. Then uh, some friends asked, how do I make this low carb? How do I make this drink low carb? How do I make this one low carb? So I started playing around and figure out how to make cocktails low carb in general, learning about different sweeteners, different uh, mixers and how to make all of those things uh, using sugar alternatives. And I've been through a lot of the different sugar alternatives. Been through Stevia, too bitter, don't like that one. Splenda, I like that one. It was sweet and yummy, yummy, but it's not really super low carb. Then um, went with uh, erythritol. Didn't like that one. It was really hard to get a good syrup out of without it crystallizing. Then there was the monk fruit, which was mostly erythritol anyway. So it, same thing, didn't find that so good. Then I found allulose. So now I do everything with allulose. Zero net carbs, it's a rare sugar, blah, blah, blah. So I now I do everything low carb using allulose to keep a zero net carbs in all my syrups at least. So now let's talk about what made me decide to make a YouTube channel out of this. Now, trying to find different recipes, and, and hey guys, I'm not the only person doing low carb cocktail recipes out on the internet. There's a bunch of websites, there's a bunch of YouTube channels, but the problem I found was it, there were cooking channels and cooking uh, websites where they had 600 recipes for food and two cocktails. And the same thing with the YouTube channels. There were like all kinds of recipes, tips and tricks to eating low carb and keto, one drink, maybe two. and. There really was no one place on the internet to go for low carb cocktails that was designated just for that. So that's what I decided to do. Make one central location for just low carb cocktails where you didn't have to go searching through different uh, cooking pages and different lifestyle pages, different YouTube channels to find one recipe. I decided to make one location, like I said, and just put all cocktail recipes here. Some of the recipes I've done or other people's recipes and I've given them credit for it. Some of these are my own recipes and some of these are just classic cocktail recipes that I tweak to make them low carb. Why I continue to do this, I was just kind of looking around the internet, you know, and I, every day I'm looking for some inspiration to do another drink and I keep finding, I come across it all the time, these cocktail recipes that are claiming that they're skinny and low carb. And I, I'm, I'm not gonna throw any names out there. I'm not gonna push any, any YouTube channel names. I'm not gonna push any website names uh, that are doing this, but there's a lot out there. A website I came across had a recipe for a low carb skinny Moscow mule and the, on the same page, they had a Moscow Mule recipe as well. The only difference was an organic vodka. So apparently someone doesn't understand the science behind distillation that an organic made vodka and a vodka that let's call it not organic after distillation are the same thing. Not having pesticides in the growing process doesn't change anything at the end, and it's definitely not gonna change any sugar content whatsoever. 
and they didn't even change the ginger beer. They didn't even say use a diet ginger beer. So this recipe I found for their Moscow Mule was two ounces of vodka, four ounces of ginger beer, one ounce of uh, lime juice. Now on the skinny one, it was two ounces of organic vodka, four ounces of ginger beer, one ounce of lime juice. So and there's people out there that are calling their recipe low carb and keto friendly and skinny when it's not. They're not doing anything to change the sugar intake. And there's a lot of them out there. I've seen one YouTube video where the guy says it's a skinny margarita and he does nothing different from a regular margarita. It's, it's I, again, I'm not gonna throw the name out there, but it's filmed in a bar and the guy pours tequila in a shaker, pours lime juice in the shaker and pours Contro in the shaker. Shakes up, puts it in the glass, pushes it forward and calls it a skinny margarita. It's things like this is why I continue doing what I do. There, it's, there's so much false information from people who haven't done the time to research with their research their ingredients. And I'll tell you, and, and I, I, like I've done an I'm sorry video because if you watch my older videos when I first started four years ago, um, it, I, I did say lime juice was zero carbs because I was using bottled lime juice and on the label it says zero carbs for a teaspoon. So it took me months, it took me a uh, very long time to finally get, actually it almost took me uh, two years to have somebody reach back out to me and contact me back. Um, and it was actually the people at Real Lime when they told me, yeah, our lime juice has carbs, um, that their serving size is so small that it's actually less than one gram of carbs. And like legally by the amount it is, they don't have to call it any carbs at all. They can call it zero. But in an ounce of bottled lime juice, it's still two grams of carbs, just like fresh lime juice. So why not use fresh lime juice instead of bottled? And I did an I'm sorry video, totally threw myself under the bus saying, for years I called lime juice zero carbs, and it's not just because of the label. So, uh, and that's another thing, people just aren't doing the research. Um, I reach out to the manufacturers, I reach out to the distillers, as an example, I don't use any of the botanical vodkas. If you've seen any of my videos, I've never used these botanical vodkas from any of these brands that do these zero sugar botanical vodkas. Because this, they're 30 to 35% alcohol by volume. So something's not right with that. A true vodka is 40% alcohol. I had infused vodkas that has no sugar added. So they took their vodka, they threw a bunch of stuff in it afterwards, then they ran it through their filter to clean it up, and they put it in a bottle. So it's 40% alcohol, and there's nothing added other than the flavor from the infusion. So why are these other ones 30 to 35% alcohol? What's this other five to 10% in that bottle that's not water and it's not a vodka? And I've reached out to those distilleries and those companies, and they've still, to this day, three years later, have not responded to me. So what do I do? I don't use them, because I've asked. If this is no sugar added, why is it only 30%? Why is it only 35% alcohol? Because there's other sweeteners you can put in that, that that's not sugar. Honey, that's not sugar. They can, they can put honey in it and say, hey, there's no sugar in it. So why is it sweet? Eh, there's honey in it. I don't know. I'm not saying that there's honey in it by any way. I'm not saying it at all. Um, Cause I don't know because they don't answer my questions. So there's three manufacturers out there that make botanical vodkas. I've reached out to all three of them. None of them can answer my questions. Why are there a botanical vodka that says zero sugar that they're not 40% ABV? I don't know. So I don't use them. So it's things like that. I, I'll put the time in to put the research out to show you guys the truth behind everything. And if y'all have any questions or comments or you think I'm doing something wrong, drop a comment. I have no problem, you know. If you can educate me more than I already am, please, please help me out. Uh, Cause I don't know everything. I know a lot, spent a lot of time researching this stuff before I jumped on the internet because I didn't want to be troll bait. And if you like my videos, make sure you click subscribe plus the little bell icon and that'll let you know every time I put a new video out. All right guys, see y'all later.